You're working crazy hours, wearing too many hats, and seeing little to no progress in your business, but you're finally ready to do something about it. I'm your MC, Anthony Kapkin, and welcome to part one of our four-part series, Blueprint to Profits, Systems, and Time, brought to you by Electrical Business, Onsite, HPAC, SPT, Connections Plus, and Next Level. We have registrants from Nova Scotia to British Columbia, and some from the United States, too. So we're dealing with some pretty universal issues among trades business owners. I want to recognize and extend a special thank you to Schneider Electric, sponsor of this four-part series. Every manufacturer wants to sell you product, but by stepping up to support our delivery of these training sessions, Schneider Electric shows how deeply committed it is to you and your success as a trades business owner. Thank you. Now, today's event is way more than just a webinar, and Andrew Houston is not just a presenter. He's a coach, an industrial controls licensed electrician, as well as an electronics engineering technologist. Andrew has been coaching trades business owners for nearly a decade, helping them improve their business skills so they can achieve their personal and professional goals. He's the owner and founder of Profit for Contractors, and you can find his columns and tradey tip videos at ebmag.com. During this roughly one hour workshop, you will work on immediate and practical strategies for optimizing your business. Andrew will invite your feedback throughout the presentation, but feel free to send him a question via your control panel. Afterward, there may be time for Q&A before we wrap things up. Be sure to visit ebmag.com slash webinars for all of our upcoming training sessions, including how to quote profitably and efficiently in June with Andrew and solving LED issues in retrofits in April. And don't forget to participate in our new Canadian Electrical Awards. For information on all of these things, visit ebmag.com. And with that, I'll hand it over to Andrew Houston. Andrew. Hey, Anthony. Thanks so much for the great intro. Uh, that was awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, we're on this call today to get back control of our time. You know, when you look at uh, our time, especially in the trades, it's uh, probably one of the most ch challenging things to get control of. Uh, we're going to get into some of the reasons why, what to do about that, and and really give you some practical um, approaches that you can actually take away today and, and put back into your business. We're going to be moving fast, maybe not as fast as this car, but we're going to be moving fast. We've got a lot of things to cover off. Um, so look, I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to give you my A game, uh, bring my A game. I expect you guys to bring your A game. So far, you guys, I can see you're bringing your A game because you're participating. Uh, one of the best ways for us to get the most out of this, or you to get the most out of it, is actually by participating. So when I'm asking questions, please type in the chat box. Uh, it's not for me, it's for you, and it's for everybody else, okay? Your input, your insights, how you're seeing things um, uh, is going to be, you know, something that uh, everybody else can benefit from. I'm not necessarily always going to be sharing people's names, but um, participation is key. The more that you participate, the more you're going to get out of this, okay? I'm going to show you where... You can get some more help if you, if you want it uh, before we wrap things up. Um, and with that being said, let's talk about a little bit of participation uh, from our sponsor. Um, so maybe we're going to get a poll put up here from Schneider. They're out to try and help you guys uh, better your business. Uh, so you should be seeing a poll in front of you right now. And the question is, and this is just we're going to take seriously 20, 30 seconds um, to uh, get you guys to, uh, to click off a yes or a no. Question is, do you think that distributors slash manufacturers currently offer tools and services that help you save and better manage your time, right? Very related to this topic, right? So again, if it wasn't for sponsors like Schneider and if it wasn't for, uh, you know, groups like Annex, you guys wouldn't be on here. So please take, I'll give you guys another 10 seconds just to click off a, a yes or a no uh, related to this question and then we can get into today's content. So again, um, please, uh, please respond. So far, uh, let's see, 75% of the people have voted. That's great. Let's give it like five more seconds. Three, two, one, and uh, maybe we can show the results. I'm pretty sure that we can do that. Yeah, so 58% said yes, 42% said no. So pretty pretty close to uh, you know being on, on the fence there. So that's great. So now we can uh, move forward with our presentation. I'll put it back into presentation mode. Here we go. Okay, Raymond said, I did get the handout, thanks. Not a problem, Raymond, it's awesome. Okay, so 
let's talk about uh, some of the challenges that you guys have related to this topic. I've been, to give you a bit of my background, I've been, um, as uh, Anthony said, I've been in the trades since, uh, well, licensed electrician since 93, had my own automation company or construction company with a you know, fair group of guys, sold it successfully. But I'll tell you what, um, <laughs> one of the biggest things that I struggled with was time management, okay? Um, you know, it's, it's something that I think every business struggles with, but especially the trades. Uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, when you look at the trades, one of the biggest challenges is that you guys tend to be, or, you know, women on the call, uh, as, far as, uh, as far as a business owner in the trades, you tend to be a Gretzky um, or, or one of the best technicians, and that, that's all fine and dandy at a certain stage in your business, um, as far as being able to make sure that you know how jobs need to be ran and what have you, but it's a bit of a curse. It's a bit of a curse because, you know, and we're going to get into this, you know, the greatest value that you can provide to your, to your company, uh, you know, is not actually being on the tools, okay? It's in a lot of different areas, and yet that's your comfort zone, that's actually, you know, um, where you're strong at. So we gotta get into this today. So let's talk a little bit about the problems. Um, I think that you guys are gonna be able to relate to this. Um, you know, when it comes to your time, you're so overwhelmed by your business, right? You're working more and more to keep up, but there's never any relief. And so the stress you feel, you know, uh, from this, you know, makes you feel sometimes like, you know, you're dropping the, the, the ball uh, on, on task, you're forgetting things, um, and your, your, your team is, seems to be, you know, coming to you too often. Um, you're wearing way too many hats, sort of like this guy here. You know, it'd be great if you're able to have um, eight arms, uh, but that's not reality. And uh, you're just, re you know, wearing way too many hats, okay? And the result of this is a couple of things. You know, if it feels right now that everything needs your attention, that there's too many things that's on your shoulders, uh, you're not alone, okay? We're gonna show you some ways of, of how, uh, how to address this once and for all. Um, you know, if you don't have the right systems in place, uh, you become the system. Let me say that again. If you don't have systems in place, you become the system. That means, you know, if there's something you need to be you know, organize or delegate, you know, uh, explained in the office or on the field, you become this walking, you know, um, system that everybody comes back to. And if you don't get this addressed, what will tend to happen is that it will actually get worse, okay? Putting in more time um, is, in some cases, not even a Band-Aid solution, but sometimes you feel that way, hey, if I put in an extra couple hours here or there, I'll be able to address my time management issues, well, the reality is that's not the right approach. Eventually, you're going to hit burnout, and you're going to keep on building up this to-do list, and it might feel like in, in some days that you're drowning in this list of to-dos. Um, it's not due to a lack of effort. Uh, that, that is for sure. I think one of the hardest working people out there is people in the trades. Um, all the clients that I have, there is no question that effort is not the problem. Um, so, if you keep this up, you just keep falling behind, um, things start to build up, and the result is, you know, you, you just have to put in more and more time, and your business, to a certain degree, starts to become a bit of a prison sentence. Um, you know, without you, it can't run. You know, without you, things start to go in the wrong direction. Without you being that system, um, things start to fall apart. You know, the team doesn't is not as productive as, um, you know, you know, as if, uh, you know, the minute that you leave the office, everybody starts going, hey, you know, it's time to freaking slacken off a bit, all right? The alternative, if we get this right, if we if we get, start getting control of our time, and this, this workshop, this isn't, I wouldn't really call a webinar, this is a workshop. I want you guys to work it today, okay? I want you guys to get the most out of this today, and that doesn't mean by just storytelling. I mean by actually, you know, taking some of these tools and applying them and getting a taste of it to actually see that, that you can make a big difference in your time management, okay? So, get this right. You're able to hand over tasks to your team and they stay with them, okay? Uh, I, I did a little article there a while ago in a, a video you might want to go back to uh, the EB Mag uh, website called the boomerang effect, right? And if you don't get this right, then you, you end up handing things over to people and then it ends up coming back to you and sometimes it's worse off than how you handed it to them. 
Um, but if you get this right, your to-do list goes down and your value goes up. We'll get into that and what that means in a second. And if you get this right, every day, week, month will show signs of progress. The results, your business is giving you freedom and it excites you. Let's face it, you got into business for a couple of different reasons. And maybe I'm not nailing them all, but I know that it's, it, you know, it's going to be some of these. You know, it, maybe it was because it was handed down to you, or maybe you decided, hey, I can do this better. But net, net, the reason that you've got a business is so that you can get, uh, you know, you can actually start to work towards some form of freedom, some form of control, some form of creating your own destiny, some form of, you know, maybe it's helping your community, helping, you know, your, your team grow. But at the end of the day, we want to get your business to be your vehicle that pays for your freedom. And in order for that to happen, we need to make sure that the things that you are working on are worth your time, okay? So let me ask you this question. Let's get this started with some participation uh, specific to this topic. What is the hardest part of getting it all done? I'm going to give you guys like 15, 20 seconds to type that in the chat box. What is, you know, what is the hardest part of getting it all done? Just type that into the chat box and, you know, I'll... Um, I'll start sharing some of that. You know, what's the hardest part? Is it, you know, it's too much in your head? Is that you have too much coming back to you? You feel like a spider web and, you know, you feel like the spiders are in the web. So just type in the chat box, everybody. What's the hardest part? Great. We got, Raymond says, interruptions. Yeah, time constraints. Absolutely. Gino says, delegation. You know, guys, let, let's get let's get everybody on this call participating. I want you guys to get the, get the most out of it. Awesome. Donald says, constant new jobs and emergencies. And, yeah, firefighting, eh, Donald? I mean, seriously, it's uh, in the trades. It happens all the time. You know, customers complaining. You know, uh, GC's giving us a call. Where the heck are you? I mean, the list goes on and on. Gino's, you know, says phone calls. Yeah, exactly, okay? It's not easy, right? Um Dylan says too many phone calls. Yeah, and by the way, guys, we're going to touch on some of these things uh, before we wrap up. Uh, what else we got? Donald says uh, texts don't give a damn. They don't take responsibility. Yep. So lack of accountability. Uh, starting, you know, just getting the ball rolling. Yep. Kevin says okay, perfect, excellent participation. So here's the key principles that we're going to look at today. Um, you might have looked at a whole bunch of different time study things and, and approaches and things of that nature. I'm going to be sharing stuff with you that hundreds and hundreds of contractors have, have been applying and making progress on. Are there things beyond what I cover off today? Absolutely. But I'm trying to give you the goals. I'm trying to give you the, the, the biggest things that are going to give you the biggest impact. Okay? So, you guys okay with that? Just type in a Y or, or a no uh, if you're ready for that. That would be great. All right. Excellent. Perfect. Okay, let's, let's keep it moving. So the first thing, thumbs up, Kevin says, cool. Vera says yes, Dylan says yes, cool, let's do this. So the first thing, team, that you have to do, I'm going to just quickly highlight these principles and then we're going to get into it, okay, for the sake of time. Hence, pardon the pun, for the sake of time. <laughs> so the very first thing that you have to do is you've got to realize your reality. Can anybody tell me what is the purpose of uh, you know, the government <laughs> might have different opinions on this, but what is the purpose of somebody doing an audit? An audit on their own company, uh, getting an outside source to do an audit. I mean, there's big companies. I know EB Meg, Annex, Schneider, uh, you know, bring in, bring in um, different accounting firms and what have you to do an audit. What is, what's one of the purposes of, of doing an audit? To confirm the reported information, Donald Gold Star, okay, absolutely. Raymond, looking for uh, like looking for time management, okay. Um, yeah, how they manage their time. Yeah, accountability. Robin says, okay, perfect. So let me give you my Cole's notes version of this. You know, it's funny if you don't do if you don't do an audit in different aspects of your business, you're never going to truly know what's going on, okay. You can assume all day long of where you're spending your time, but if you don't take, you know, the 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 um, assumption, everybody knows what the the acronym for assumption is, right? Make an ass out of you and me, okay? If you don't take and and go from assumption to to actual tangible uh, tested uh, data, 
then the odds are you're going to be a way off. So the very first thing that we've got to do is we have to realize the reality of where we are spending our time. Okay, I'm going to actually show one of my clients um, examples of this, and, and we'll get to see what you guys see with that example. Okay, number two is we need to determine what stays on our desk. I'm going to get into what this uh, means in the literal sense, and I'm going to get into this as far as what the acronym means um, in just a moment. But we got to determine what's going to stay on our desk. All right. Uh, if we don't determine what that, that needs to stay on our desk, um, then the problem is that there's going to be a lot of things that um, we're focusing in on that we shouldn't. There's going to be a lot of things that we're not focusing in on, uh, and net, net, we're not going to be able to move the business forward. Okay. Third principle. These are the three key principles we're going to go through today. Um, the third principle is that your profits and cash flow follows your calendar. What the heck does that mean? This is so crucial, okay? If you don't put higher value things into your calendar, okay, then you're only going to get out of your week, um, the, you know, the results you're going to get out of your week is going to be based upon, um, you know, the low value things. So in, in other words, net, net, if you do not get clear on where you are going to get the maximum value of your time, I mean, I don't know how many people are on this call that are owners. I don't know how many people on this call. Actually, that'd be a great question. So just so that I get a gauge, how many people just type in if you're the owner, primary person, if you're an employee, if you could just type that in. Okay, I would like to see everybody um, give me a result on that. So we've got Andrew, Andre, Calvin, Danielle, a couple of Danielles, Donald, Dylan, Gino, Jason, Johns, Johnny, Kevin, some Raymond, some Roberts, Robbins, Vera. How many people on this call are actually owners? Wow, this is this is great. So like 98% of people on this call are owners. Perfect. Okay. Um, employee looking to start my own business. Perfect. Uh, principal. Yeah, great. Project managers uh, and owner start. Okay, perfect. Excellent. Okay. So you're the owner. You should be doing things that are of the highest value in your company. And if you're not then your net result is going to be lower than that. It's simple math, right? If you're doing things that are minimum wage in your week, whether it's five hours, 10 hours, 15 hours, uh, if you're doing things that are $20 an hour, $30 an hour, then guess what? Your, your, you know, your net result is going to be proportionate to where you spend your time. So that's principle number three. So let's turn these principles into reality. So, You've got to realize your reality. So let me see if I can bring this up here. Let's see if I can. Can everybody see my screen? I'm trying to use technology here to help us out. Okay. Can everybody see my little screen here? Is that the top? It says, what are your current roles? Is it big enough? Just type that in. Just quickly, yes or no. So I can adjust it. Okay, perfect. Great. Thank you, everybody. You guys are doing great participation-wise, okay? So let's take a look at this. So here's somebody, here's one of my clients, Mar Martin. Um, you can see where he's gone with his business with this. Um, so let's take a look at this, okay? Here's a list, and by the way, this is not the full list. This is, um, it's a good chunk of it, but this was the list that we took uh, when he did a time audit, okay? So he tracked his time. We're not gonna get into all the details of that, but he tracked his time, and here's, the things that he was doing, here's this list one to 25, and uh, here's where he, you know, here's approximately where he was um, putting his time, okay? So, with that being said, can anybody tell me, uh, when we're looking at this, uh, where are some of the areas uh, that he was putting uh, too much time in? Okay, and I'm going to give you a little bit of a trick. You want to look for anything that's above five, uh, five hours and above. So I want you guys to just take a quick look at this, give you, seriously, look at, the, look at the clock here, 15 seconds. Take a look at the list and tell me what do you see. Hint, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Five hours and up. Raymond says quotations on small jobs. Yep, so let's take a look at that. Quotations on small jobs. Let's see if I can use my magic wand here. Whoops. Pull that back up. There we go. Got the old magic wand working. 
So quotations on small jobs. Yeah. What else have we got, team? What are some of the other areas? Yeah, okay, so we got, uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, uh, but uh, I apologize, Andre, if that's not how you pronounce your name. So we got number three, you know, invoicing. Yeah. We've got uh, packing slips. Yeah, we're spending uh, time. Number 21. It's 21. Chasing after accounts receivable. Okay, staff management. Let's see, where is staff management? Where is that there? Okay, yeah, managing the staff. What else? On the tools. Yeah, okay, you guys get the idea. Here's where there was some big aha moments, okay, when he did this. He had no idea. I'm just going to highlight some of these guys in red. He had no idea he was spending five hours a week on accounts receivable, that he was spending seven hours a week chasing paperwork, okay, um, that he was actually on the tools. Now, that, now, keep in mind, this is a company that's about a 20-man uh, crew now that they've moved up to almost 27 man crew, but 20 man crew, and he's on the tools 10 hours a week. Okay, look at this. Picking up material, absolutely five hours a week picking up material. I know I said five hours and above, but let's circle this one because they go hand in hand. So when it comes to material, eight hours delivering and picking up material. Okay, uh, what else we got? Um, you have job, you know, quoting six hours a week on on doing small uh, quotations. Now in, in this case, this was work that was $500 and below. That's what we defined as, as small jobs, okay? So, let's take a look at this. If you don't get clear on, tr on where you're spending your time, how in God's name are you going to know where you should be adjusting your time, okay? Now, can you guys tell me um, what would be a couple of things that are is not on this list that even just one or two things that are not on this list that you think that he should be doing or doing a little bit more of. Can anybody tell me? Where should he have been spending more of his time from a value perspective? Anybody tell me. Or that's not even on this list. <laughs> oh, Andre, you nailed it. So let's take a look. One hour a week dealing with Class A clients. Yeah, not uh, really a good, uh, you know, a good amount of time as far as focusing on sales. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. He he wasn't dealing. He wasn't he wasn't creating any systems. Very little working on the business, right? So zero creating systems. Anything else? Notice, hint, hint, what was the, what was one of the purposes of the tool that you guys got that was sent to you today? The top five money making, what? What was it? Money making meetings, right? He was having no meetings with his team. I wonder how that was affecting his communication. Wonder how that was affecting whether or not he was on track to, you know, uh, you know whether the jobs were on track and progressing the profit or not. So, you know, he was a busy, busy guy. You think about all these hours. He was working between, you know, 80 plus hours a week. Now I'm not saying that that's you, but the reality is that you've got to get a snapshot of where the heck you're spending your time. So in order to do that, one of the things that you want to consider is you want to, you know. Take a period of time, say the next week or the next two weeks, and just get a snapshot. Now, you might say to me, hey, Andrew, but time changes. Uh, cycles in the business change. Okay, that's fine. Okay? But if we're dealing with what's happening, you know, say we, we start tracking our time and getting engaged where we're spending their time, um, in the next week or two, that's going to be um, uh, a close of enough real-time gauge for us to actually make some changes to. Okay? Yes, in three months from now, our time, uh, where we spend our time might change, but we want to get a snapshot of where we can find some quick wins right away, okay? So I'm going to come back to this page in, in just a second. Let's come back to presentation. Okay. 
So here's a couple of results that, um, you know, that doing that provided for a couple of these people, a couple of my clients here. Um, I don't know if you guys know RNF Construction. Um, so they basically do a lot of insurance jobs, a uh, fairly large size uh, company, uh, two or three different locations. Uh, so they were able to realize that, you know, they weren't putting enough time in, in you know, focusing in on growing the business and, you know, stopping the, the leaks and profit um, because they never took the time to look at it. All that they were doing, uh, Rick and Dave, uh, was just putting out fires, running around. They had very little systems in place. So here's the thing, right? You know, they, they, start, they, they, they started this business, it's, you know, uh, back, uh, their dad started it back 30-some years ago. Um, you know, these two guys, uh, very talented, very great insights as far as you know, on the technician, tradey side of things, especially, um, you know, Dave, um, as far as understanding, you know, how to technically, you know, um, build a house, how to technically, technically do the job, same thing on Rick's side. But the problem was they weren't spending enough time in getting the business to run without them. So you guys might want to write this down. You want to get your business so that you systemize the routine and you humanize the exceptions, okay? Um, you know, in their case, uh, without them knowing it, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars were being lost year on year, um, tens of thousands of dollars, you know, quarter by quarter, because they weren't taking the time to do an audit in the different departments of their business to recognize exactly where the leaks uh, were and, and what need to be plugged. Okay, uh, putting together just a weekly meeting, um, help them get a lot more focus, help them get their team to focus on their time management. And now these guys have um, increased their profits dramatically. Um, they've reduced their hours dramatically. They've got now time to spend with their family. And it all started with getting a reality check of where the heck they were spending their time and identifying where they weren't properly spending the, their time. So let me ask you guys this. Okay, just quickly, um, how much time did you work last week? So if you guys could just type in that into the chat box, we're going to go pretty quickly through these. So again, your participation is key. You know, when you write this stuff down, you're going to be able to take this information and do something with it. So make sure you take the time to write it down, but I'd love you to type it into the chat box. So we got, again, I'm not going to say any names here. Okay, so we got 50 to 60 hours. We got 70 hours. We got 60 hours. We got 40. I feel like I'm at an auction. 20, 20, 20, 25, 30, 40, 46, 60. <laughs> okay, 60, 80 plus hours, 45 hours, 55 hours, 40 to 50 hours. So here's really the question, right? When we look at this, and this is not this is sort of like an additional question. I'm just you know adding to today's chat. Let me ask you this. Um, you know what is the value of your time? What is the value of your time? Oh, by the way, Donald says systemize the routine and humanize the, yeah, so humanize the exceptions. Yes, yeah, so systemize the routine. Systemize the things that happen habitually and humanize the exceptions, okay? So systemize the routine. Systemizing, you know, how do we start a job site? How do we run a job site? How, we, how do we finish a job site? Now, what's the things that are, you know, humanize the exceptions? Well, we can't stop a lightning strike. Can't stop a, a, a you know, winter storm. But, you know, if we can systemize 70 to 80% of our business, especially in the trades, you can systemize about 70% of how the job sites get ran, started, tracked, and finished. And I know that. If you don't believe me, we can have another conversation. But, uh, yeah, you can, you can do that, right? And that's going to make a lot more efficiency of your team, uh, a lot more accountability, and a heck of a lot more use of your time and increase in profitability. So what would, be, what would you say is the value of your time per hour? Tell me what is the value of your time per hour? What would that be? How much are you worth per hour as the owner? Type that into the chat box. 150, 1500. Keep going, guys. What else do we got? What is the value of your time? If you're struggling with it, that's okay. All right? Here's the point. You need to understand the value of your time, all right? We're going to get into that in a little more detail, but you need to understand the value of your time. Uh, it is huge. Um, I've got a client of mine, uh, you know, who, you know, used to be on the forklift, used to be out, um, 
you know, chasing the paperwork, doing a lot of things, doing accounts uh, payable, chasing accounts receivable. Not that that's not important and not that the owner doesn't need to get involved regarding accounts receivable, but they need to get involved at the right time, not at the very beginning. You want to have systems. You want to have processes. You want to have policies so that the owner, when he gets involved in something like accounts receivable, um, actually has some authority. Okay? Um, we want to escalate the process. So your value of your time is huge. Um, this client, Yvonne, uh, realized that the value of his time, no word of a lie, was worth uh, in the five to $10,000 mark, depending upon uh, what kind of client he landed. It was funny that he had a very similar um, you know, time study as, as the person that I just showed you there, Martin, um, and he was not spending near the amount of time that he needed in building strategic alliances and landing class A clients. You know, we tracked his time going out, getting him focused. We got him back five to 10 hours a week. He was able to take the, the you know, five plus hours a week and start focusing on going out and, and prospecting. He went and landed, this is like, you know, a year and a half ago, went and landed a quarter of a million dollar annual client, okay? And you think about it, you take that quarter of a million dollar annual client. When I asked Yvonne, when we tra actually tracked his time, it only took him about, 20 plus hours to actually go and land the client. Now his team has to go and service that client and provide their product and service to the client and do the installs and what have you, but to actually land the client, okay, who's now coming onto the two year mark at over a quarter of a million dollars, um, it only took about 20 hours of Yvonne's time, okay? So it's funny, if I was to look at this, let's just see here if I can pull this up. This blew Yvonne away. Now, I'm not saying everything you do is going to have this level of, vo uh, of value of time, you, but you really need to recognize what your value of your time is. So let's take a look. Let's just quickly take a look at, at this. So I'm going to try and add a new page here. All right, there we go, magic wand. So here we got a $250,000 okay, per year client. Okay. Took him 20 hours to go and land. So emails, setting up meetings, you know, sending some product, uh, things of that nature. So here we've got $250,000 divided by 20 hours. That's $12,500. Now that's on the sales side of things. So let's say that you know he's making 30 points on that. Okay, 30 points on that. So the profit he's making is $3,750, okay? Now guess what? We're coming on to year number two. If he services the customer properly, we'll come on to year number three, and on and on and on. His average retention of clients that he has is approximately between eight and 10 years, okay? So imagine this here, on average, if we're looking at the life, this is profits times eight, Okay, thirty thousand dollars. So, from a profitability perspective, how value is valuable is his time. This just keeps repeating and repeating. So, team, there's so many different things that you can do in your business, but what we've got to do is make sure that we are focusing in the things that's going to generate the value in our business, and that's getting the reality check of where you're spending your time right now before we can move on to the next part of today's conversation, okay? So, great participation. How much time did you work last week? Awesome. Number two, where did you put your time? What tasks were you most mostly focused in on, okay? I don't need you to give me a whole list right now, but but I just want you to, to be able to answer these questions. So write these questions right, down, uh, right, uh, right now down on your piece of paper so you can take them and, and work with them. And what percentage of your time did you spend on your business? Okay, if we don't put, you know, the, the right amount of time to, you know, you hear this term all the time, it gets overused, working on the business. Okay, what the hell does working on the business mean? It means things like what Yvonne is doing, okay? It means things like leadership. It means uh, about building a, a, a team. It means making sure that we're focusing on systems. It means that we are maximizing our profits in everything we're doing. When I hear people say, oh, I don't have time to take a look at my uh, profit and loss statement. Uh, you know, I don't have time to, seriously, you want me to break down, coach, uh, how much profit we're making on each type of, of business that we do? And I go, yes. I mean, why are we in business, right? 
we want to maximize control and the profits in their business. Hence my philosophy, get your business to be your vehicle that pays for your freedom. You've got to maximize your profits, okay? And control of your business. All right, so that's principle number one, okay? Oh, last little part. Let me read that number three. What percentage of time did you spend on your business, business's most valuable tasks, okay? So I want you to write down, just put it, actually put it into the chat box. Give me one or two you know, really valuable tasks that you're going to start looking at putting more time into right now. If you just type it in the chat box, that would be great. What are uh, just one or two higher value tasks that you're not doing enough of right now, or you're doing little of, or you're, maybe you're not doing it all, that you're going to start doing, you know, uh, based upon some of the things that I highlighted today. Robin says, larger projects. Excellent. Looking at, the, at financials. Beautiful. Meet with high value customers. Oh my God, John, team, let's think about this. When was the last time you actually called your class A clients and actually sat down with them? Okay, when was the last time you took them out for lunch? When was the last time you actually sat down and, and did a handwritten letter? I mean, this isn't really rocket science, but really take the time, do a handwritten letter to say thank you, okay, to your class A clients. Or do we spend way too much bloody time with class D, um, pain in the butt uh, customers, and or tire kickers, right? So let's make sure that we're getting a reality check of where we're spending our time. Principle number two, determine what stays on your desk, okay? So how do we go about doing that? Well, how about if I show you how we go about doing that? One of the key things that you wanna look at is this thing called a matrix, okay? I'm very much a model-driven person because I really believe a picture is worth a, yeah, a thousand words, right? I truly believe that. So. Um, when we're looking at this, um, you know, we want to, you know, Raymond's saying that's exactly the problem, right? Working with class C and D customers. Yeah, we've got to fire them, okay? We've got to get rid of these guys, and there's a way to do that, a proper way to do that. And you want to fire these people so that you can get back what? Time, profits, cash flow. Stop being a bank for, your, for these class D clients and start focusing your energy on, you know, getting more class A's or moving your class B's up to, you know, class A status. So let's focus on this principle. How do we know what to keep on our desk? Let me do this a little bit better. How about we first of all understand what the acronym for DESK stands for? DESK stands for, this is your coach's acronyms. This isn't in a book. This is, uh, this is out of the head of the, of the coach here. You need to determine first of all what we're going to delegate. By the way, if I make any spelling errors, I apologize, but that's not the big value of my time. We need to determine what to delegate, what to eliminate, okay, what to systemize, and what to keep, okay? Typically in this order, okay? I'll give you a little uh, tip here. If you go to delegate something, usually you're going to have to create some sort of system for it. I don't care if it's cleaning the shop. You need to have a system, okay? There's a reason why when you walk into some of these restaurants, they've got a little checkbox, you know, when you go into the, uh, you hang out on the door, because they've systemized, you know, hey, when is it going to be clean? And to hold the team accountable to make sure that it was clean and by who and by when, right? So in order to determine what to delegate, eliminate, systemize, systemize and keep, we have to use uh, a model, okay? You guys can take this, grab your piece of paper, and let's make this happen. Here's the model. You want to come up with a grid. Okay, the grid's going to look like this. Nine box grid, nothing too complicated. You guys are smart cats on this call, I know it. So just follow me here. So we're going to have these nine boxes. So after you do a time audit, the thing that you want to do, I get my clients to do, is I get them to put the things that they do, and it doesn't have to be exact, just get close, okay, into these nine buckets. Well, what the hell are these nine buckets? Well, let's first of all understand how the grid works. The bottom of this grid, okay, is called skill set. There is low, there's medium, there is high skill set. The other, the vertical, okay, is basically what? It's value. Value of your time, value to the company value to your customers, whatever the definition of value is against that task, okay? And what do we got? We got low, we got medium, and we've got high. So, 
if I'm looking at uh, cleaning the toilets, which um, which uh, box would that fall into? And let's label these boxes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Can anybody tell me which number cleaning the toilets would be? Type it into the chat box. <laughs> we got Raymond says Raymond says seven. So high value, low skill set. Okay, Raymond. Hey, man, that's totally cool. Uh, for me personally, it'd be more like a number one. Okay. So you know this this because it's it's um, you know low skill set, low value. So if we're looking at let's uh, let's do this. If we're looking at our, at our friend over here. Yeah, it depends. It te it's a, uh, Kevin says, depends if your wife is at the office or not. <laughs> yeah, you got that right. Okay, so if we're looking at this, we want to go and put these, determine which things do we want to delegate, what, what things do we want to, you know, eliminate, what things do we want to systemize, what have you. And that's going to be directly related to um, the, the, the matrix and where those things fall into that, those buckets, okay? Because here's the thing. If you're looking at high, handing something over to somebody, so let's go to, whoops, let's go to, I'm going to close this thing. Whoops, sorry about that. Sorry, I'm making your head spin. These are all the different models I use. So if we're looking at delegating something, what is, where's, which is the first box that we're going to look at delegating or eliminating? Which box? Numbers one to nine, which box? And I want everybody to participate here, okay? I want you guys to step it up. Let's get some participation. So Kevin, Raymond, Robert, Robin, Elana, okay? I want everybody participating here. Donald, Daniel, Calvin, come on, guys. Let's get this. So the first place that we want to start, guys, you're doing a great job here. Okay, some people put in six or six plus. The first place that we want to get rid of, I call it the red zone activities. Okay, is right. Oops. Right here. The next place we want to look at is right here. The next place that we want to look at is right here. Why? Because the skill set is low enough that if we delegate it, people can pick that up really quickly, and it's going to be a lot easier to systemize and, and hand that over, okay? Um, there are times when you have to delegate things that are more medium or high uh, value based on where your business is at in the contractor's ladder of success, which we'll touch on. But um, you definitely want to deal with uh, the, the quickest and easiest place is going to be anything that's in this zone here because it's, it's low skill set, okay? All right. Next thing that we got to look at, next principle. Actually, before we get into the next principle, here's a result of that. Um, Mark Cable, Cool Tech Mechanical, great guy, great client, uh, been in business for like 18 years. And again, he struggled, right? He, he grew his, his crew, it went up, it went down. You know, at, at one point he had, you know, a, a, you know, a dozen plus employees and up, and then, it, and then it would cycle back down again. And, you know, he would keep on saying, you know what, maybe I should just do this on my own. You know, maybe I shouldn't have a team. You know, maybe I should just stop trying to grow my business. The problem wasn't that, you know, Mark didn't, uh, like I said before, put in the right amount of effort. The problem was he didn't know where to start. Um, he didn't know uh, where his, his time was best spent, and he didn't know how to go and increase his business without it costing him a fortune. Um, you know, the, well, where's Mark now? Mark's at a point now where he's growing the business at a pace that actually is manageable, that is profitable, increases profits by 210%. How the hell did he do that? Well, he got very clear on where the value of his time was. This wasn't the only thing, but we went out and we got him focusing on getting Class A clients, dealing with the Class A customers uh, that, that he already had, getting Class A referrals, focusing on Class A business, and guess what happened? He started to get more of it, but it wasn't enough. But we used the systemization of his selling process that we, we created for him to go out and get another salesperson. Lo and behold, he, he went and doubled his profits because he was able to go and do, start duplicating himself uh, on these high-value tasks, okay? Um, and that allows for a lot, right? When you're profitable, when you've got money in the bank, you can invest that money to pay for your freedom. Okay, if you're not profitable, if you're not maximizing your profits, even if you're doing really well in this call today, 
No, Mark and I sat down, we had a 15 minute chat, you know, very quickly. And within a very short period of time, he realized, hey, look it, I'm working on the wrong things at the, at the wrong time. Uh, or actually, he was working on the right things at the wrong time, which constantly drew him back to, to some form of disaster or slowing him down. The key is to make sure that you're working on the right things at the right time, depending upon the cycle of your contracting business, okay? So, you know, 15-minute chat with, with Mark, um, and the same as, um, you know, uh, any of these guys on the call, it, it, it was, you know, raising their hand and asking for help in getting it, okay? So, that being said, what are the top three most valuable tasks that you want to complete? Okay, now that we've sort of touched on this, what are the top three most valuable tasks that you guys want to uh, focus in on from today's call? Just type that into the chat box. You know what, don't even go with top three. Let's just, uh, you know, I already asked this question a bit before. Uh, somebody said sales. So let's just deal with the top one. What's one of the key things, everybody on this call, that um, you see as being uh, a valuable task that, that you want to complete or focus in on? Kevin says systemizing. You got sales. Gina says, I think, collecting. John says BD. I believe that stands for business development. Spend more time on class A's, Raymond says. Yeah. Uh, following up on jobs, yeah, that's huge, huge. Um, actually, if you go back to that time study um, with Martin, uh, that was one of the things he wasn't spending enough time on. He's spending so much time coding and not following up. That's one of the key things to landing jobs. So you do all this work and all this effort, and yet you don't get any results out of it, right? Sales, project management of uh, software, Robin says. Talking with clients, beautiful, okay? So a couple other things. You know, which least valuable task would you like to stop? Type that into the chat box, okay? I'll give you guys 15 seconds. Which the lead, what is the least valuable task you'd like to stop? What is the least valuable task that you got to stop? Weekly reports, okay? What else, guys? Least valuable task that you're going to stop? You know, dealing with Class D clients. Yeah, that's a good one, right? Absolutely. Yeah, babysitting the crews. Yeah, that, that's a good one, right? Follow through with uh, uh, on work orders that are, were already assigned to text. Yeah, uh, picking up material. Guys, that's a huge one. Okay, that's huge. So, beautiful. Great participation. Keep it coming in. Let's move on to the next area, okay, of focus. Let's take a look at this guy here. Profits, principle number three, profits and cash flow follow your calendars. Team, this says so much. Let's take a look at Martin here, okay? Putting systems in place helped get us 50% time back and increase our profits by 35%. Within 20 minutes of having a chat with Martin, we were able to identify where he was, where his time was being killed. He was spending, honest to God, most of that 50% of time back was being spent um, chasing his crew. So what did we do? We put a system in place to stop that, okay? We put things in place to hold his team accountable. Okay, and it doesn't always have to be heavy lifting things. It can be some really quick, easy things to apply. Um, and net net, you know, uh, better communication means more profits. Um, you know, here's another guy. You know, Jazz Tech Electric, uh, great guy, Cameron, uh, very heavy participant in the uh, Ontario Electrical League. Uh, ex uh, amazing man. Uh, puts a lot of time into uh, growing the community of electrical contractors, which is great. He doubled his team's efficiency in less than two months. Uh, again, same thing. We had 15, 20 minute chat and lo and behold, we were able to identify, you know, that he had no structure in his business. Nobody knew what their roles and responsibilities were. Uh, so everybody was just sort of, you know, doing their own thing in, in the business, almost like every employee was their little micro business. And even if people have the right intent, if they don't know the clarity of the roles and rules, well, guess what happens, right? They do it their own way, um, sometimes with the right intent, but it doesn't give the right results. So, um, with that being said, a uh, quick little question here for you guys. Picture your ideal week, right? And this is just some things to take back to, to the business, right? Uh, again, we can have a little chat about this if you guys want, sp specific to your business, but you gotta identify what are your most valuable tasks, right? You know, we gotta identify how are we gonna maximize communication? How are we gonna improve profits? How are we gonna improve better leadership? And how are we gonna move this business forward? Hope is not a good strategy, okay? So I'm going to give you guys some quick wins. I know we're covering off a lot. I'm going to start wrapping this up in the next little couple of minutes here.
But you know, we, when we look at some of the obstacles that get in the way, um, can you guys tell me what are some of the obstacles? Actually, you guys answered this in the beginning, so let's just nail some of this stuff. Obstacle number one. Okay, some of you guys typed this in in the beginning, so you might be going, man, this Andrew guy's inside my head. <laughs> that's awesome. I hope that's the case. Time vampires. Okay, these people. Here, here's their titles, okay, in a sentence a format. Have you got a minute? Yeah, you, got, you like these people. Or, hey, Mr. Meeting, you yeah, know, let's have a meeting. Uh, let's have another meeting, okay? Let's have another meeting so we can waste more time. Mr. Trivia, right? People that can differentiate between, you know, I've got this situation. No, I had to do this. I got pulled over here, right? I, Mr. Trivia, or you want to call them Mr. Excuse or Mrs. Excuse. Emotional crisis person. You know, everything's a, 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 you know, a, a drama show, okay, or some form of soap opera. Guys, you've got to get, you got to identify these people and nail them. So here's a couple of solutions for the, you know, I've got a minute person, you know, is to invite them over um, to go over uh, their items at the end of the day. Okay, so you got to put control around them um, so that they're not running your calendar, you're running your calendar. Um, Mr. Meetings, right, we got to get structured. I gave you guys a great tool for that. Mr. Trivia, you know, you've got to get them to sort of identify, uh, you know, numerically, not just like I think this is higher or lower, numerically what's higher and what's lower. Emotional crisis person, uh, you got to cut to the core of the problem. Don't let them tell the story, okay? Ask them things like this. So what's the question? You know, hey, before you go any further, whatever you tell me, in a nice way, whatever you tell me has got to be related to, you know, you know, the per to a purpose. So, you know, what is the purpose of why you're telling me this, okay? Obstacle number two person, Mr. Interruptions, okay? Interruptions, guys, destroy your productivity, okay? Um, and, and you know, this thing of uh, multitasking or, you know, touching three things three or four times, you're probably about 60 to 70% less efficient every time you add something to your list of, I'm going to try and juggle, you know, uh, another ball. Let's face it. Let's just use this like as if we're all going to apply for uh, becoming a clown or a juggler, right? Juggling one ball is not even juggling. You know, that's just throwing a ball up and down. Taking two balls and, you know, juggling them meets that criteria of juggling. And most people on this call can do that. Add a third ball. What happens? Complexity goes through the roof and it becomes very difficult. Very few people can juggle three balls. Yeah, even fewer people can juggle four balls. So, the, the, mor the moral of the story, because it's a principle, is that that's the same thing that happens when people are interrupting you, right? Your, your, your train of thought is lost. You know, you got to spend another five, ten minutes to come back to what you're thinking about, and it's just totally inefficient. So you got to stop these people, okay? So um, close, close your door. Uh, put in your calendar, you know, think times uh, when you got to focus in on certain things, okay? Back to your cash flow follows your calendar. And some other interrupting uh, strategies beyond calendar. Don't answer the phone, guys. Don't answer the phone. Only answer the phone in cycles, okay? You might be thinking, Andrew, you're crazy. Well, guess what? It totally helps you do what I call the deck of cards, okay? Is that, you know, if I was to hand you a play, where, say we were playing a game of poker, and all I do is hand you one card at a time, okay? So you get one card, and then you got to make a decision. All you have is one card to look at from a value perspective. You, but if I gave you five cards, isn't it interesting? You're going to be looking at, you know, if we're playing a game of poker or something like that, you're going to go, hey, look, there's the ace. There's the king. You know, there's a two. There's a three. Hey, I'm going to focus in on the ace and the king. So make sure you create structure around your time so that you can focus in and control where you're spending your time. Okay? So um, that is, I think, it on the sense of uh, struggles and challenges and interruptions and things can get in the way. So really today's call is about getting you guys to be a lot more proactive, get a lot more control of your time. You have a choice to make. Is it going to be the old way? And I want you to type this into the chat box. You want to do it the old way, never ending to-do list. More jobs means more hours versus more jobs mean more profit and more freedom. Uh, or you're stuck in an, an official prison sentence where you can't leave the business and it starts falling apart. Or the new way, you know, your list gets smaller, okay? You know, more jobs means more freedom. Uh, you know, you don't, you do what you want when you want, all right? I'm not here to completely take you off the tools if you like doing that. But my job with business owners in the trades is to get them to be able to make the choices that they want, to do what they want to do um, so that they can have the freedom in their business. I've got lots of my clients that have gotten the freedom so that they can work on the tools, but the difference is it's a choice, okay? So which way are you going to do, guys, the new way or the old way? Just type that into the chat box, and that would be great. Love it.
the right side of the road. Kevin, I got to steal that from you, man. Yeah, you're going to be on the right side of the road, right? Um, everybody's saying the new way. I love it, okay? It's about a decision, guys. It really is a choice, okay? And, and you know, the old saying, Rome wasn't built in a day. You know, get, con getting control of your time wasn't, uh, isn't done in a day. It's done one step at a time, okay? So, um, let's start wrapping this baby up, you know. Guys, you, you know, we want to work with your team for profits, not against them, okay? So let, let's make sure we bring the leadership to them that we need. So here's a bit of the wrap-up. You know, I don't know what really resonated with you today. I'm not sure why you attended, you know, today's webinar, but, you know, those individuals that I shared with you uh, as far as, and that's just a fraction of some of the people that have gotten results, is because they took action, right? They were proactive. They had a chat with somebody like myself to actually identify specifically to their business you know, how they, they make their business move forward, okay? They raised their hand and, and they got help. So on behalf of you know, EB Meg, uh, they've been kind enough to work with me to offer you guys up this complimentary 15-minute chat um, to get clear on, you know, where you should start and what you should do uh, specific to your business. Look, if you've been struggling with your time management up to this point in time, the odds are it's not due to a lack of, of passion to do that. It's because you, you don't know where to start and, and you, you know, you can keep on doing it, you know, the way that you've been doing it or you can, you got to ask yourself this question. Okay. Um, can I do this alone? You know, am I going to keep doing this alone or should I really take this opportunity? I took the time to be on this call to actually get help, to actually improve my business, to be able to spend more time with my family, to be able to spend more quality time in my business and, and more quality time with my team. Thanks again, Andrew. Uh, always uh, a pleasure to listen to you. You bring your energy and your passion to make these things happen. Andrew is returning uh, in June. So uh, again, keep an eye on your inbox or visit ebmag.com slash webinars to, uh, to see the upcoming sessions. Uh, and uh, thanks especially again to Schneider Electric. Uh, sorry, Schneider Electric, uh, who wants you to be a successful, profitable trades business owner. Thanks and have a profitable day.